All right, well, I have eight o'clock by my clock, and that is our start time. I know people are still logging in, still joining the webinar, and um, we can let them do that. Uh, the numbers keep climbing as we get started. Welcome. Delighted that there are so many people here uh, taking time, that you're all taking time out of your busy schedules to improve your own health, taking steps to uh, empower yourself with information um, about a topic that's very interesting to me. My name is, oh, uh, my, my slides were going forward before and now they weren't. There we are. My name is Kate Rayom. I'm a doctor of naturopathic medicine, graduate and former faculty member of the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine. I am uh, a member of, um, in the uh, registered with the College of Naturopaths in Ontario in the inactive class, which means I'm not currently seeing patients or taking patients. Um, if you would like a referral, you feel free to contact me to refer to one of my colleagues. I'm the author of the book that you see here on the screen, Vitamin K2 and the Calcium Paradox, How a Little Known Vitamin Could Save Your Life. And tonight's topic is one that is near and dear to my heart, both personally and professionally, because for lots of reasons. Uh, the main one is that it's a, such a fascinating topic to research with so much practical information that can really make a difference with our short and long-term health that I love to study this topic and share this information. So that's what we will um, jump right into. We'll have about 50 minutes, five zero minutes of information and uh, about 10 minutes or so for questions at the end. If you have a question, a burning question as we're going along, feel free to tap it or type it into the chat area. And then I will get to those questions, as many of them as possible uh, towards the end. I noticed that some people were using the raise hand function. I'm not quite sure how to get to that part, but um, if you do have a question, please um, type in it. Okay, so our topic tonight is lower your biological age, get younger this year. I mean that, I wouldn't just say it if it weren't true. We can literally get younger this year. I will tell you how. Uh, but first I wanna talk about you know, what we mean by that. When we talk about our age, we are usually talking about our chronological age, which is the difference between today's date and the date we were born. Without a time machine, there's nothing we can do about our chronological age. It is what it is, it's governed by the calendar. But there's a different and more functional way to measure your true age from a biological standpoint in terms of a measure of how long you might live, how soon or how late you might develop certain age-related diseases, and how well you might fare when it comes to those diseases. So this has to do with our lifespan as well as our health span, how long we can expect to be healthy. So this is our biological age. Biological age uh, can be determined at the cellular level. There are a number of markers that are thought to be good gauges of our biological age, so-called biological clocks. In other words, things that we can look at in our cells and in our physiology that will determine how old we really are biologically. You can be older or younger than your chronological age. So a 50-year-old person in great shape may biologically be 40 or 45, uh, or if they're not in good shape for whatever reason, they may be 55, 65. Um, so how do we determine this? Like I said, there's a few ways to do it. One of the ways in which we are now uh, realizing it, it turns out to be quite a good measure. It's not the only, but it's a very good measure of biological age and one around which there has been a lot of research, thousands upon thousands of papers, is something called telomeres. Telomeres are the very extreme ends of our chromosomes. So uh, just about every cell in our body has a DNA in it. And that DNA, our, our main genome, is packed into X and Y shaped packages uh, because uh, we need to, to pack in all this long um, material. And the very tips, the very ends of those packages are called telomeres. And so this is a special area of DNA that tends to be long when we're young and tends to be long when a cell is young. But every time a cell replicates and divides, and over time, the ends of those telomeres get shorter and shorter. And once they reach a certain critical limit of shortness, that cell will either die 
or go into this retirement state called senescence, which is, it's not a good thing actually for our physiology, that cell then needs to be cleared out. And so this, uh, the, the length of our telomeres is considered to be a, quite a good uh, marker of our biological age. It's a biological clock. Shorter telomeres means you are older biologically compared to somebody of the same chronological age that has uh, longer telomeres. Uh, so shorter telomeres tends to mean a decreased survival from, as well as an earlier onset of many chronic and age-related diseases, as well as a shorter lifespan. So what uh, I'm going to do uh, very briefly in the next 45 minutes or so is to look at the research around what helps us uh, get younger because the really good news about this is if you have short telomeres today, no matter how old you are, if you have short telomeres today, you can make them longer, which means that from a biological standpoint, you can literally get younger this year instead of older. So uh, how we do that is surprisingly simple. I'm not saying it's easy, uh, but it's simple. And so let's talk about that. But first, let's talk about how to get older faster. So here are the things that we do that accelerate our aging process at the biological level, at the cellular level. Things that we know will uh, shorten our telomeres and are associated with shorter telomeres and being older biologically. The first one, uh, top left corner here, is the couch potato. Being completely physically inactive will cause us to age faster. We are meant to move, and if we don't move, it actually provokes inflammation on the body. It's counterintuitive if you think, how could you be causing inflammation by sitting there doing nothing? But in fact, that's exactly what happens. And for many of the things that we'll talk about that accelerate your aging process, they do so because either they promote inflammation, which is aging, or they promote free radicals, uh, um, you know, production of free radicals, which also will accelerate the aging process. So not being physically active does both of those things, but particularly it um, promotes inflammation. Next down here at the bottom, this, this graphic with all the words on it are uh, toxins, pollution, um, you know, chemicals in the environment. They will accelerate the aging process. We could do easily a whole webinar or a whole weekend uh, seminar on that, uh, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, uh, but knowing that these things can accelerate the aging process is important. Um, next, is you know the graphic of the obviously unhealthy diet we've got the fried chicken the french fries the donuts um not surprisingly eating an unhealthy diet accelerates aging now what makes this an unhealthy diet and why does it accelerate aging well first of all the diet that we see is low in nutrients if you are lacking nutrients you don't have optimal levels of nutrients on an ongoing basis your body will prioritize the, the, you know, the use of the nutrients that you are getting in for your short-term needs. In other words, whatever you need today, which is usually energy production. And they'll, it, your body will do that at the expense of your long-term needs. So if you only have a certain amount of, for example, B vitamins, you will use those today for energy production. And that means you may not have enough left over for DNA repair, which is something that today might not be that important, but over time, if you're not repairing your DNA, it leads to cancer and all kinds of other diseases. So lack of nutrients is, is a problem with this diet. Another big problem with the diet is high levels of sugar. High levels of sugar will increase your insulin levels, and that is not good for uh, the aging process or your brain or anything else. Um, another big problem with this diet is that it's high in um, unhealthy polyunsaturated fatty acids. So we have this little um, graphic here of the bottle that says PUFAs, P-U-F-A, that stands for polyunsaturated fatty acids. Specifically, I'm talking about the unhealthy omega-6s that we tend to get in vegetable oil, all of these foods that once upon a time would have been fried in animal tallow, which ironically is, is much healthier for us than the processed vegetable oils that we have today that are, are not healthy and become quite toxic, in fact, when they're heated. So these are some of the problems associated with this unhealthy diet and how they make us older faster. Smoking, don't think I need to say too much about that. It's not the nicotine that's the problem other than being addictive, it's the toxins in that. Um, and stress, stress is, you know, stress will accelerate the aging process, but there's some really 
helpful, hopeful, um, interesting information about stress and how it affects our brain. But absolutely, people who are under a lot of stress will age faster. That's not surprising. I think we all intuitively understand that. And then not completely last, uh, absolutely, but you know, in, in that there's lots more that I could be talking about. Um, but uh, for tonight, I will leave it here, here, which is that carrying extra weight uh, will accelerate the aging process because uh, particularly abdominal fat cells. Um, I don't know what happened to my graphic. Usually I show a muffin top here. It's literally a muffin coming out of some pants. Um, that this, that the, um, we hold on to inflammatory compounds in those abdominal fat cells. And if you can lose just a little bit of that fat, you don't have to have a, lose a, a, a lot of your body fat, but a little bit of fat and, and you know, that abdominal fat makes a big difference. Okay. So this is a short overview of the things we do to get older faster. This is the bad news. And now we're going to move on to the good news. All right. So how to get younger this year. These are evidence-based ways to lengthen your telomeres. In other words, lower your biological age, which you can do um, usually within a few months. It doesn't take that long. It's really good news. So obviously the things I'm going to say in this graphic, for the most part, represent the opposite of everything I just said uh, in the how to get older faster part, starting with exercise. Uh, exercise absolutely will lower your biological age. People who exercise um, are, are younger biologically than those who don't. Uh, people who undergo exercise uh, training can lengthen their telomeres in just a few months. It, basically, you want to know how much exercise. Any amount of exercise is better than doing nothing. Uh, studies show that even people who walk for about 15 minutes per day fare better on a, a number of levels and live longer. So that's one very simple thing that anybody can do just about. And um, if you're looking for a specific prescription, high intensity interval training has been shown to lengthen telomeres in a few months. How does this work? It's pretty fun, actually. Uh, so if you are able to, uh, you should always check with your doctor first. Running, I don't like to run, so I tend to walk as quickly as possible. So uh, running or, or walking as fast as you can for roughly three minutes, like you're looking at eight to nine out of 10 intensity, uh, really, really working hard. And then a moderate intensity, seven maybe intensity out of 10 for three minutes. So intense, moderate, intense, intense, moderate, intense. And you alternate this about four times. So the whole thing with your intense and moderate, a uh, little bit of warm up and cool down is about 30 minutes. And doing this has been shown to lengthen telomeres uh, in just a few months. But again, any kind of movement is better than nothing. And studies have shown the more different types of movement you do. So if you like biking and walking and swimming, for example, doing different things is even better for you. All right, next. Next is the bad news. Well, it's it's good news because this really does work, but it's the least fun news that I have to share with you. <clears throat> but it, I, I have to share it with you because it uh, makes such a big impact. So the graphic here with the little burger is a reminder to talk about the fact that uh, one thing that has been shown to extend lifespans in all kinds of creatures, including humans, is caloric restriction. I know it's as about as fun as it sounds. Um, and so this just means eating less, consuming less calories. Now, I don't recommend to consume less calories by eating tiny burgers. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, portion control or trying to just eat smaller portions will make you crazy. Uh, it's really hard to do once it's human nature or physiology. Once we start eating, we want to keep eating. And so arguably the easier way to engage in some kind of caloric restriction, by the way, caloric restriction means reducing your, obviously your caloric intake by at least 20% uh, severe caloric restriction would be up to 50%, but the key is without sacrificing nutrient intake. You're not, you don't want to risk malnutrition here. And again, there should be a whole evening or weekend um, in this and consult your naturopathic doctor or other practitioner who is knowledgeable in this area. But you've probably all heard of intermittent fasting. This is probably one of the simplest and easiest ways to restrict your caloric intake. In addition to generally lowering your caloric intake, uh, with intermittent fasting, you go for longer periods between eating, which puts you into this fasted state in which um, good things can happen for your physiology that helps to uh, promote longevity. So I won't say much more about that, but just to know that this is something that 
exists and is helpful for um, slowing aging. Next down at the bottom is a graphic that says fiber and there's lots of high fiber foods. So one way to lower your caloric intake and still eat is to eat more fiber. And people who eat more fiber have longer telomeres. They are younger biologically. It makes a difference. And uh, we know that most North Americans have quite a low fiber intake in their diets. And, uh, and so getting that up is good for all kinds of reasons, but it is also shown to help make you younger and slow the aging process. Fiber itself has no calories, takes up space, uh, makes us help, helps us feel full. It's one of the things that helps us feel full along with fat. And yet it, um, so not bringing any calories, but uh, it often comes in very healthy foods. And so increasing your fiber intake by sprinkling, for example, ground flax or hemp seeds or chia seeds on your food, uh, eating more whole fruits and vegetables. These are all important ways to get more fiber into your diet. And if you need to consider a fiber supplement, because getting more fiber really does make such a difference. Uh, for this aspect of health. Okay, that's fiber. Next, this is fun, good news. See these ladies chatting and laughing? Socializing. People who socialize uh, are younger biologically, and it's not that they are doing so, you know, because, because they're getting, or they um, get out more because they feel that way, but getting out more makes them feel, and actually biologically at the cellular level, help be younger. So that's cool. Next, we have antioxidants. So I mentioned before that one of the reasons why pretty much everything that ages us faster does so because it increases either inflammation and or free radicals. Uh, both of these things will accelerate the aging process. And so by taking in, more, how do we combat free radicals? It's by taking in more antioxidants. So antioxidants come in our diet through Fruits, vegetables, colorful fruits and vegetables, where you see more color, you see more antioxidants, and uh, herbs and spices. And I'll talk about some specific ones. There is interesting research that has come out not too long ago that shows that organic food uh, is higher in antioxidants, specifically when, for example, bugs try to eat the leaves of your food. Uh, that causes the fruit in that food to produce, or vegetable, to produce more antioxidants. So it makes your food more nutritious as well as tastier. It's neat to see that. <clears throat> and both the graphic with the fiber and the antioxidants is a reminder that we need more nutrients because as I mentioned before, if you don't have optimal amounts of nutrients, your body will preferentially use um, nutrients for short-term needs. And then long-term there's problems because your DNA is not getting repaired and other things that we need um, for long-term health. Up here is the graphic for, oh, let me go down first, magnesium. Magnesium is a mineral that, as I'm sure you've heard, is often deficient in our diets. Uh, it's not always easy to come by. Now, it happens to be, you know, the, the good sources of this are the same foods that are often high in antioxidants and fiber, the other things I've already talked about. Uh, but magnesium is a mineral that is used for the enzyme that makes our telomeres longer. So when we do things that help to lengthen our telomeres, they don't just start growing, but there is an enzyme that starts to make them longer. And that enzyme needs magnesium to do its job. And so getting adequate magnesium helpful for so many things, we've probably heard over 300 different reactions in the body, and this is one of them. Okay, going up to the graphic that says, slow down, keep calm, be positive, take it easy, breathe, meditate. So these things are obviously all the opposite of the stress graphic. And um, these all are helpful, meditation, uh, breathing, uh, these kinds of things. As a matter of fact, there is one study that showed that people who meditate, there's lots of studies on meditation and telomeres, lengthening telomeres. People who do you know, month-long silent retreats <laughs> or hundreds of hours of meditation, yes. Um, people who meditate have younger looking brains, um, if, you know, lifelong meditators, but studies have shown that even people under high amounts of stress, if they meditate for just 12 minutes a day after, uh, I think it was roughly three months, that study um, showed that they were getting younger biologically, which is amazing. And specifically what I wanted to say about this graphic in terms of being the opposite of stress. So 
Yes, as I mentioned before, studies have shown that people who are under lots of stress do age faster, it accelerates aging. Um, however, they have shown that even for groups of similarly stressed people under the same kinds of extreme stress, like people who are um, caregivers for dependent uh, either parents or children or, or full-time uh, caregivers, they are under a lot of stress. But the people who perceive their stress, their daily stresses in their life as a challenge, age slower than the people who perceive their stress as a threat. So there's a really powerful effect that the mind has on our very, you know, on our biology down to the very cellular level, the process of aging, our perception can affect that. And yes, some people are definitely naturally more positive than others. There's no doubt about that. But you can learn to change your perception with, with you know, work, time and effort. Um, and, and, and proven methods like cognitive behavioral therapy, not just putting on a happy face or uh, repeating um, positive things in the mirror, but <laughs> things like cognitive behavioral therapy, for example, can change mindset. And this can impact how long you live. Um, so that's a really interesting thing about stress. I think stress um, is, um, you know, it's um, a big threat, but there's also a huge opportunity there. And then last but not least, again, in, in no particular order on, on this slide, are omega-3s. People who consume more omega-3s, eat more omega-3s in your diet, uh, are younger biologically. Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. They can be tough to get in our diets. Typically, these studies looked at people who are taking fish oil supplements. And it makes a big difference in lowering your biological age. All right, so I am going to focus. Now, these are... This is an overview of the uh, science-based ways to get younger this year. And because I'm a naturopathic doctor, I'm going to focus the rest of the session mostly on the nutritional aspects of getting younger. And so biologically, the specific nutrients that help us delay aging, either because they're fighting free radicals, they're boosting our antioxidant um, intake, they are fighting inflammation, they're helping our mitochondria work better. These are the energy producing parts of our cells that have a big impact on our aging. All right, so we are also going to talk about uh, an important age related topic that may not necessarily cause you to age slower, but it'll cause you to look like you're aging slower. So I'll get to that. So we're going to talk about optimizing omega-3 intake, optimizing our nutrient intake for long-term health, fighting inflammation and free radicals, keeping calcium at its place. I'll touch on that briefly. Uh, it's been requested. And restoring collagen, which is a hot topic and a hot age-related topic, and with good reason. And there's a lot of good news there. Okay. So let me just say I've, uh, just a few words about omega-3s, um, because I think this is one that people talk about a lot, but for good reason. There is just a ton of research about omega-3. It's good for cardiovascular health, brain health. Um, you know, it's anti-inflammatory. Anti it is good for the aging process. Uh, and so getting in, getting in omega-3s through eating fish is challenging because no matter, even if it's wild caught, organic, whatever, um, fish contains environmental toxins, you want to avoid those. A good quality essential fat acid supplement, the, one, the kinds that are used in clinical trials, so this is the good quality fish oil supplement, are processed in a way that removes those environmental contaminants. You get the omega-3s without the toxins. It's a big advantage. If, uh, you know, in my books, if you're going to take only one thing in terms of one nutritional supplement, it should be a good omega-3 supplement. And what does that mean? Uh, I've recently seen omega-3 uh, and fish oil supplements at my local dollar store. Uh, not a great idea. I checked the label and it was uh, misleading in terms of how much you'd actually have to take um, to get a, a decent dose. You want your fish oil to be pure, potent, and frankly, Tasting good helps. <laughs> the fish oils have come a long way um, since the, the, well, even in the last few years, obviously they've come a long way since people used to drink horrible cod liver oil as kids a couple generations ago. But uh, even in the last few years, there are truly yummy um, fish oils, which if you're looking at a liquid, something's tasty, you'll remember to take it instead of forgetting, especially if you've got kids in the house. Um, so the Sea Rich here is an example of pure, potent, um, and tasty fish oil in terms of a liquid. Not everybody wants a liquid 
Uh, for travel, it's nice to have capsules. So on the left side, there is maximum triple strength RX omega-3. So typically this is a one a day dosage. Typical recommended intake for omega-3s is 1,000 milligrams per day. Um, I, honestly, in the winter, I think most people um, should double up on that, especially if you're suffering with any kind of dry skin, for example. Uh, that's a sign you need more omega-3s, that winter itch. Um, so the RX omega-3 triple strength, typically one a day will hit that close to that 1,000 milligram mark um, or two in the winter. Okay, let us move on. So. Let me say one thing I mentioned before that having optimal levels of you know, having deficiency of any nutrient can potentially accelerate the aging process. This has been studied individually for all kinds of different nutrients. Magnesium is one of them, vitamin D, all of the B vitamins, um, just about any nutrient you can think of. If you don't have enough of it, it will accelerate the aging process. And again, the key is to have enough for both short and long-term health. Just about every nutrient is used for both for immediate needs, so things that you need for today, um, energy um, production, tissue repair, if you have an injury, stress response, if you're under a lot of stress, these are kinds of immediate needs uh, at the expense of long-term needs, um, which again, DNA repair keeps coming up on this one uh, because ultimately that's what keeps us healthy long-term. And so just taking a good quality multivitamin will, uh, you know, it's, it's inexpensive ins health insurance to make sure that you are meeting those needs. So look for one with vitamin K2 in it. I'll touch on that later on. Uh, if you're not getting uh, vitamin K2 otherwise in your diet, look for it in a multi. So the whole earth and sea for example, is an example of one that um, has in a multivitamin. And ideally, if you can look for one with the active forms of the B vitamins, B vitamins in our food or in standard forms of supplements, we don't use them immediately in those forms. The liver has to convert them to the activated forms that the body uses. This can be done in a laboratory um, because sometimes those B vitamins can be excreted before we have a chance to convert them, especially if you're not, if you genetically don't convert them well, that certain portion of the population uh, is, uh, has that concern. Um, so looking for uh, either an active B complex or a multivitamin like this one here that has the um, active forms of the bees, like in the whole earth and sea complex we have here. All right, next, I'm trying to make time for, um, trying to make time to make sure, sure we have lots of time for collagen. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so I wanna say something about a topic that I know people are familiar with because there's so much talk about this in the media and uh, lots of health information about it. And for good reason, because there are thousands of papers on the health benefits of curcumin, which is the active ingredient from the herb turmeric. Um, but because of that, anything that's a hot topic, there's usually misinformation that abounds. And so it's good to be able to try to clear that up. And unfortunately, this is a topic around which, uh, you know, consumers and shoppers are not able to compare apples to apples or really understand the choices or the, the products that they're buying just by looking at labels. Because the labels, it's not that they aren't clear, but um, the way Health Canada requires um, you know, the labels to be made, you can't distinguish between um, the efficacy of different products. So curcumin is a wonderful anti-ager for a number of reasons, but the big one is that it's a fabulous anti-inflammatory and it's a fabulous antioxidant. It's also good for the brain in a number of different ways. It helps mimic the effect of um, exercise on certain levels, for example, the cardiovascular level. Um, not to say that you should just take curcumin and not exercise, but <laughs> for people who truly can't exercise, who are bedridden, for example, um, oh, you know, uh, this is, and for lots of reasons, curcumin, you know, it's, it, there's a hot topic for, for good reason. It lives up to the hype. And most people know it as a pain reliever in terms of that type of anti-inflammatory. And it has an amazing ability to control all inflammatory compounds appropriately in the body. But curcumin, as you may have heard, uh, is difficult to absorb. The, the trick with curcumin is absorption. And if you're not absorbing it, you're not getting the benefits from it. And so curcumin needs to be changed in its natural form, say in a turmeric powder uh, or in a 
that you would might put on your food, you just don't absorb, studies are quite clear that you just don't absorb really almost any curcumin from that. Um, and the amazing results that were seen in laboratories were using um, high absorption forms and now in being used in clinical trials are high absorption forms. So you wanna look for what's called a high absorption form. There's different ways of making this happen. The curcumin rich here uh, features a form of a curcumin that has been ground down to a teeny tiny particle and that allows it to be absorbed. Um, and that really makes a difference with absorption. Hold on one second. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry guys, my throat's getting so dry. I'm trying to find my mute button, it's not showing up. Instead I'm just forwarding my slides. <laughs> All right, so um, the key with the ferrocurmin is the particle size has been ground down very, very small. So here's standard curcumin powder under a microscope. Same magnification of the ferrocurmin. Uh, and obviously with a smaller absorption particle, um, you can absorb better. Okay. All right, good. So we're making good time for what I know is a really hot topic um, and one that lives up to the hype. And this is uh, collagen. And so, hold on. Now I found my mute button so I can clear my dry throat. <clears throat> so collagen. Now I have to be honest with you, uh, restoring your collagen levels is not something that will lengthen your telomeres that we are aware of. So I can't say that this will lower your biological age or help you physically or, or biologically get younger this year. But as I said, it will help you look younger um, and feel younger. Um, and so that's, that's worthwhile. Collagen loss is a big factor in the aging process. Over time, Starting as early as our 20s, we lose about 1% of our collagen per year. So collagen is a major protein, structural protein, that's found throughout the body in um, skin, joints, bones, blood vessels, eyeballs, um, tendons, ligaments, everywhere. Our, our body, uh, this is the, how we compose our structure, many aspects of our, our body. There are lots of different types of collagen in the body, and I'll, I'll get to that uh, a little bit later on. Uh, you know, different types of collagen in your eyeballs versus your skin or joints, for example. And we, like any other tissue, collagen is lost over time and needs to be regenerated, rebuilt. But starting in our 20s, our capacity to do that, that rebuilding, replenishing capacity of our collagen producing cells starts to slow down. And so uh, we lose about, as I said, 1% per year. And by the mid 30s, this will start to reveal itself externally as fine lines, wrinkles in the face, that's due to collagen loss. Uh, and although nobody's crazy about those, to the equal measure that collagen is being lost from the outside where you can see it, it is also being lost from the inside of your body, from uh, many different areas. And so this can ultimately make a major impact on our joint health, our cardiovascular health, our, um, our even oral health, our, our gums and, and teeth, um, our muscles. And so being able to slow that collagen loss or, or even better, restore the collagen, get our collagen producing cells to step up production again, makes a big difference with many aspects of health. Yes, appearance is one of those, um, but it's much more than skin deep. A second here, okay. Okay, so I wanna say something about collagen and bones because this is an important and overlooked, underappreciated aspect of bone health. Our bones are roughly 30% collagen by weight. What makes our bones hard is that collagen is then mineralized uh, with minerals like calcium, for example. But if you've ever done the magic bendy bone experiment in high school, where you take a chicken bone and you put it in vinegar overnight or for a couple days, and the acid will 
leach the minerals from that bone. But the bone doesn't you know, disintegrate or turn to mush. What you have left over looks just like the chicken bone you put in, but when you pick it up, now it bends like rubber. And this is a really impressive uh, way to show once you've leached the minerals out of your, your you know, hard as bone, bone um, that what's left over is this protein matrix. And if that protein matrix is shrinking, then you, know, you can take calcium supplements, vitamin D, even vitamin K2. But if there's nowhere for it to go, there's no binding sites because your, your bones are shrinking, literally, um, the matrix um, is shrinking, then, um, then that affects your bone health. So I think that collagen levels has been an aspect of bone health that has been overlooked and underappreciated. So I always like to mention that. So there is a way to get your body to start producing its own collagen more efficiently and more effectively again, and that's with collagen peptides. That is one way of doing it. Um, I'll, I'll mention another. Let me just see if I have. Oh, I didn't. I didn't show my my little graphic. I missed my little graphic of the collagen peptide. So. Collagen is found uh, not just in human bodies, but in animal bodies as well. And you can take that, you can do this at home in your own kitchen if you want to, um, by taking bones, animal bones, and making bone broth. Uh, this is a way of drawing the collagen out of those bones. And how you know you get made a good bone broth is when you put it in the fridge, it gels up and turns into a gel. And then when you uh, drink that, you will get some collagen, not as much as in a supplement, but you will get some collagen. Your, your body will break that down into the little peptides that, that are absorbed. When those little peptides go into circulation, they stimulate or they, they tell your own collagen producing cells that, hey, look, collagen's breaking down here, start making more. Um, so this is something you can do uh, in your kitchen, although like I said, it, it's not as, certainly not as close to as concentrated as, as having a supplement. So collagen peptides are hot for a big reason, like an important reason, and it's something that lives up to the hype. Clinical studies show that they will reduce fine lines and cellulite and uh, cushion uh, creaky joints, um, not just noisy joints, but painful joints, restoring the collagen back into joints, uh, helping lubricate um, joint spaces, for example. Uh, so it really makes a big difference for skin, hair, nails, uh, and um, joint health in particular, that's what a lot of people uh, want and are looking for. So I'm gonna talk about two types of collagen here. This is, a, we've got a bovine collagen and a marine-based collagen. And uh, I'm gonna bust some myths about collagen, which I love doing because there's some confusion and myths because it's a hot topic, that always happens. Uh, so first for the bovine source, total body collagen is a line of, um, non-GMO hydrolyzed collagen. So hydrolyzed means that the long, that collagen normally exists in long protein strands, but those have been broken down and, and with using um, enzymes into and these little protein fragments. That's what hydrolyzed means. Um, and this is what you want for absorption. This is from uh, pasture-raised and grass-fed cattle. Now collagen is not a complete protein. Collagen is missing the amino acid tryptophan. So uh, the total body collagen adds in the tryptophan for complete amino acid profile. This does a couple things. First of all, this turns your collagen into a complete protein. So 10 grams of this collagen is in fact 10 grams of protein, uh, like any other protein you would eat. And if you take collagen supplement for very long, and it actually doesn't take very long, without added tryptophan, you can quickly deplete your tryptophan levels. This has um, been shown in studies, as a matter of fact. And um, so I do recommend either adding in, uh, having a product like this that, that adds in the tryptophan or taking additional tryptophan. One of the myths I hear is that, oh, you'll just get it from the rest of your diet. It doesn't work that way. Um, studies have shown this. So the total body collagen, in addition to added tryptophan, features vitamin C, which is a nutrient that's really important for collagen production. Um, the reason why when people have scurvy, for example, that old time vitamin C deficiency disease, uh, their you know, teeth fall out because you lose all the collagen in your gums and then your, your, your teeth can't be held in anymore. So vitamin C is important for collagen production. Um, the total body collagen also includes biotin, wonderful nutrient for skin, hair, and nails, L-glutamine, as well as hyaluronic acid, which is not uh, required for collagen production, but on its own is a wonderfully hydrating for the skin and joints. 
um, there are joint health claims um, around hyaluronic acid. So this is available in two flavored and one unflavored version. Lots of people are putting this in their coffee. That's right, um, is, is one way to go. You do that with the powders. And uh, there's also tablets for people who just don't want to have a drink or they find it more convenient to travel with um, tablets, for example. Then as an option, there is the brand new uh, Total Beauty Marine Collagen. Now this is uh, collagen, just pure straight collagen from a fish source. So some people don't want bovine, they don't want um, mammal source for whatever reason, collagen. So this is 100% marine collagen, sustainably sourced from wild caught fish skeletons. It is uh, tested like all the other products I mentioned by Isure, which is a third party testing facility to make sure it's free of contaminants. That's important with these types of products because um, contaminants can get into bones and as we know fish, of course. Uh, and this provides 10 grams of highly digestible, non-GMO hydrolyzed collagen per serving, but it has no other added ingredients. This was specifically a choice because some people are looking for straight collagen with nothing else in it. Um, so the Total Beauty uh, Marine Collagen, you know, meets those criteria, but I still do recommend taking um, some added tryptophan at the very least with this. And how much collagen do you need? Well, studies have shown that one scoop per day, so 10 grams of, of either form of the collagen that I mentioned, will, oh, let me back up, one scoop per day will, uh, is, is a good dose, effective dose for joint health. Skin health, you don't need quite as much. You typically only need about 2.5 grams per day for skin health. So that's in fact a quarter scoop. So um, the powder, for example, goes a very long way. And typically results are seen within 30 days. As a matter of fact, all the clinical trials are guaranteed results within 30 days. And those results will last for as long as you take the product. Uh, and then roughly 30 days afterwards. So if you stop taking it, it takes about a month for the fibroblast to start you know, slowing down again and for the collagen to diminish and, and leave and basically go back to, to where you started. Uh, one thing I want to, uh, I really do want to comment about because I get so many questions on this topic and it's, it's an area of confusion for many people, is the concept of types of collagen. So there are different types of collagen in the body. There's about a dozen different types of collagen, but more than that in the body. Uh, depending on where it is in the body, you, your collagen needs to have a different structure to, uh, to have a different function. So there's, um, you know, type one, two, and three are the ones that we hear about most often. And there is a notion, there, in, a false notion, that in order to make type one collagen, you need to take type one collagen, and to make type two, you need to take type two. And so there's different products, different types of collagen, depending on if you want joint or skin. It doesn't work that way, in fact. When you take hydrolyzed collagen peptides, those little peptides that are broken down, will signal your fibroblasts, your collagen producing cells, to produce collagen and elastin, and they will produce the appropriate type of collagen for the area of the body that they're in. Um, the notion of collagen type when it comes to collagen supplements, in fact, doesn't actually have any meaning because once you break those collagen down into the little peptides for absorption, which, which all these products do, they're no longer type one or type two or type anything. They are just simply collagen peptides. So for people who are out there looking for type two collagen product to, because they want to make type two, just, you just need collagen peptides. So that makes things simpler. Uh, so one very common question I get asked whether the health concern is bones or skin or joints is what is a vegan or vegetarian option? What can vegans and vegetarians take? Because there are no vegan sources uh, or vegetarian sources of collagen, it's all animal based, but you can still get your fibroblasts, your collagen producing cells to work harder by taking um, a mineral based product, vegan based product, which is biosil. So biosil works in a similar mechanism to collagen peptides. Uh, well, it does the same thing by a slightly different mechanism. So biosil will upregulate or, or, or activate your fibroblasts to produce collagen and elastin, and it's clinically proven to improve the uh, clinically proven to improve the condition of uh, skin, hair, and nails, uh, as well as bones and joints. And so this comes in drops. So collagen is 
um, choline stabilized orthosilicic acid. I won't say that again, that's what I'm just gonna say biosil. And this is a specialized type of uh, silicic acid that is highly absorbable. And again, it causes your fibroblasts to start that um, production. So for people who just wanna have a couple drops or a couple capsules instead of a, a drink or, or several tablets, or people who are looking for a vegan vegetarian form, uh, a way to boost their collagen, this is it. You can take uh, collagen and biosil together. I have to admit, I do this. Um, they work, they complement one another, so you can take one or the other or both. Okay, and then, oh, I put this last. Well, I'll, I'll, so last, I'll move on a little bit from collagen to make a brief comment about vitamin K2 because, uh, well, because I wrote the book on it, but also because even before the webinar, uh, we had questions being emailed in about vitamin K2, so I will mention it. Uh, for a few reasons. There's, there's um, you know, misunderstanding about this. Uh, vitamin K2 is something that plays a role in wrinkle prevention along with collagen because elastin, which is the uh, stretchy element in your skin, can become calcified and that affects uh, and can promote wrinkles. And so vitamin K2 removes calcium from areas of the body anywhere that it shouldn't be. Uh, it's been shown, for example, in postmenopausal women to reduce arterial stiffness and restore arterial flexibility by um, stimulating uh, or removing calcium from, from areas that it shouldn't be. And uh, hang on, my computer apparently is not plugged in. Let me plug in my computer, guys. Um, and so this is something that's important for uh, bone health, cardiovascular health. So it helps to direct calcium towards the bones and teeth. And it helps direct calcium away from arteries, heel spurs, kidney stones, and any other soft tissue areas that you don't want the calcium to be. So this has major implications for many aspects of our health, uh, even beyond driving calcium uh, into the bones and, and out of our soft tissues. Vitamin K2 has shown to be helpful for preventing a number of types of cancer. Prostate's a big one, so really important for men and prostate health. Uh, speaking about men's health, it will also increase sperm count, helps to increase testosterone levels, which um, you know has a number of benefits. It um, is also one that's really important for children's health. The growth of the skeleton in childhood and adolescence uh, really benefits from vitamin K2. K2 is not that easy to come by in the diet. Um, it's highest in a vegetarian food, a vegan food called natto, which is a Japanese fermented soybean food. It's also high in some types of cheeses. Brie, Gouda, and Jarlsberg cheese are three of the top three cheeses for vitamin K2. Uh, if you compare that with a glass of red wine, then you have uh, probably the heart healthiest snack that you could think of. Um, there are, so certain types of fermented foods uh, have this, and grass-fed animal foods. So if you can find, uh, again, this is a fat-soluble vitamin, so grass-fed butter, uh, grass-fed egg yolks, for example, will be sources of vitamin K2. Hard to come by in the winter, especially in Canada, uh, year-round, really. Uh, so vitamin K2 supplements are a great option um, for people who are concerned about bone health, cardiovascular health, uh, children's health. Um, you know, I, tr I try to feed my kids as much brie and Jarlsberg as I can, but then they get, the little one gets tired of that. So I'll pop in a, a vitamin K and D. So vitamin K2 comes on its own or in combination with vitamin D. These two work very well together. Vitamins K and D are buddies. Uh, so if you're already taking a vitamin D, then a, just a K2 supplement uh, can be very helpful. Um, if not, then the K and D combo is quite convenient because you can get uh, both of those nutrients together in one dose. Uh, the, you know, one soft gel, for example, that contains 100 to 120 micrograms of your vitamin K2 is a fine uh, dose for health maintenance. If you are concerned about bone health, the current bone health trials use roughly double that. Um, actually 180 micrograms is what's being used, so let's, let's call it 200. Uh, that's, so that's roughly two soft gels uh, or two capsules. Uh, and the arterial health, so the reversing calcification 
studies are using roughly double that. So 400 per day is what's being used in those studies. And 400 per day would be like eating one serving of natto per day, if you're into that. So that um, is a look at dosing. Um, vitamin K2 can't be taken with the blood thinning drug warfarin um, because they, counter, they counteract, ultimately counteract each other. Um, but any other blood thinning drug is not a problem. Things like Plavix, Effiant, Pradaxis, Ralto, they work by different mechanisms and they do not interact with vitamin K. Okay, one last thing I'll mention that, show, that I already mentioned briefly when I was talking about the collagen is all of the products I mentioned um, from a variety of brands found at Healthy Planet are tested by Ashura, which is, uh, was originally founded to do, oh, my, I thought I had another slide on that, which is, was originally founded to do um, GMO testing, but also does mass spec testing, which is contaminants testing above and beyond the Canadian guidelines. Uh, so testing for over 700 different contaminants uh, to make sure you're getting exactly what's on the label and nothing you wouldn't want uh, or no surprises in there. And so it's something to look for on the uh, label of your products. Okay, so that brings us up to the end of the information I had for you. And I, and I saw lots of questions coming up. Here we go. Um, Let's, let's go to the top. Okay, so this one I think I already um, answered. I've read that vitamin K2 helps to prevent face wrinkles by preventing calcium from invading elastin. Would it also help after a wrinkle forms? Um, the, the bigger factor with wrinkles would be collagen. After a wrinkle is already formed, restoring collagen will have a, a bigger impact. But for some people, then the elastin, once it becomes calcified, if that, that is um, something that's happening, then yes, vitamin K2 will, will reduce that and result in a softening of the, um, of the wrinkle. Um, the question here is, is it possible to watch this webinar again? I think so. It's being recorded. So um, that, probably available again through Healthy Planet. Maybe Samir can send me a message about how people can reach that. Okay, um, if you're allergic to fish, can you take omega-3 fish capsules? Nope, if not. So if you cannot take omega-3 fish oil supplements, if you're allergic to fish uh, in any form, capsules or um, liquid. If not, where can you get your omega-3s by diet or supplements? So there is one source of omega-3 that is fish-free. It does provide um, DHA, um, not both DHA and EPA, but that is something that's important and it's an algae source. So for example, marine algae DHA, which is in the whole earth and sea line, for example, that is a, a source of um, algae-based uh, DHA that's fish-free omega-3. Oh, we will upload the video to our YouTube channel so the YouTube channel is there, and then you can see the video. How about drinking both bone broth protein from multivitamin? How about drinking bone broth protein from multivitamin replacement? Um, bone broth is a wonderful part of the diet. I do drink it uh, myself. Sometimes I throw my collagen supplement into my bone broth, uh, but it is not a very high source of, of uh, vitamins and minerals. I would not uh, consider that a replacement for a multivitamin supplement. Uh, what are your thoughts about MCT oil? MCT oil, so medium chain triglycerides, which are de derived from coconut, uh, can be a wonderful source of fuel, a type of healthy fat, especially for people who are trying to get into ketosis that will do that very effectively. Um, so for, certain, for some individuals who are trying to lose weight uh, that, or trying to boost ketones for their brain power, then MCTs can be very helpful. Okay, go through here. Oh, please use the Q&A section. Okay, let me, I'm using the wrong section. There's still lots of questions in this section, so I, let me just see here where the... Q&A, there we go.
Uh, okay, so we answered the one about vegan omega-3 supplements. That's the marine DHA. Um, what are your thoughts about MCT oil? Oh, how do, how do you choose the brands you suggest? That's a good question. So from, uh, how do you choose the brands you suggest? Well, all the brands I suggested, what they have in common, one of the main things they have in common, I mean, they're based on their formulas, uh, but that the fact that they're tested by Aishura, so I know that they contain exactly what they say they contain as well as being good formulas. What else? How much daily recommended optimal amount of fiber and omegas? Um, fiber, you're, you're aiming for ideally 25 grams per day um, or more. There's no such thing as getting too much fiber. You know what happens if you get too much fiber, but that's a great uh, target to aim for. Um, and omegas, now that, that how much omegas um, varies more per individual, but like I said, a good round number is 1,000 milligrams in the summertime and 2,000 milligrams in the wintertime, especially if you seem, if like your skin seems dry. Can you get too much curcumin? Um, curcumin is quite non-toxic. Uh, the studies that I've seen um, in quite very high amounts, I, I in fact don't think I've seen a toxicity level. So not to say that more is better, um, or that taking tons will be better for you than taking the doses that have been used in clinical trials, but it's, it's very safe. Uh, taking curcumin supplements, people with stones and gallbladder can stimulate movements. So um, I start feeling my gallbladder stones after three to five days of taking curcumin, it's not pleasant. So yes, so this is one caution that is to be aware of and that is listed on the label for curcumin products is use with caution uh, for people with gallbladder disease, which means gallstones, for example. Um, and if, if that is something, so it's not a complete contraindication. You have to, you can try it, you can start and go slow. But if, as you know, somebody's saying here after three to five days, you can feel the movement. Other than taking less, it's tough to be able to avoid this um, because that's just as one of the things that the, you know, curcumin does, which normally is healthy, helping to promote bile flow. But if you have gallstones, then that's going to be problematic. So um, if there's a way around that, I'm not aware of, of what it is. Uh, the name of the slide with the curcumin on it was a curcumin rich. Uh, collagen is collagen only for women? Absolutely not. Men have collagen throughout their bodies and their collagen is declining as well. Men seem to take collagen more for joint health, especially active men, keep them moving, keep them active. Um, but uh, cardiovascular health is a really important concern for men and um, collagen will help with that. Um, so yes, that question here, I think I already answered for collagen uh, replacement uh, options other than marine and animal products is Biosil. Will collagen supplements make fibroids go, grow larger? Hmm. I don't think so, but it's a question I'm going to have to look into. And we'll have to get back to you on that. Uh, Vegan-friendly collagen, we talked about that. Um, I think that we, oh, here we go. Do we need to add tryptophan to our diet if we take biosil? No, nope. biosil works by a different mechanism. Um, you are not loading up on all of the other amino acids, so it won't throw off your tryptophan. You not, it's not a concern um, uh, the way it is with collagen products. Biosil, by the way, is nice with vitamin C uh, because, you, again, you need vitamin C to produce the collagen. Since you're upregulating your collagen production, I like to take and have people take extra vitamin C with their, just even 500 milligrams with your you know, biosil dose. That's a good, good idea. Um, Oh, this is a question. That's funny, I was gonna answer this before. Uh, when you take collagen as a supplement, does it make your body lazy naturally and making its own collagen? Well, our bodies are naturally getting lazier and making their own collagen. That's inevitable with time. And so um, that's gonna happen anyway. The, taking a collagen supplement does not accelerate that process or um, affect that process. That Once you stop taking a collagen supplement, you go back to whatever you were uh, before. Do you think vegan omega-3 supplements are as effective as fish sources? Well, 
The vegan, uh, so marine DHA algae is just as good as fish DHA. There's no doubt about that. But the problem, unfortunately, the challenge is you can't really get a good um, vegan source of EPA. That's tough. So um, you can get DHA as something, but you, it's tough to get the EPA. And EPA is important, for example, for mood. Um, can we take K2 only, or does it have to be in a supplement with other vitamins? No, you can take K2 only. Many people have uh, already their uh, you know, nutrients coming in their diet, and, and uh, K2 doesn't have to be combined with anything else in particular. Uh, what's a K2 dose for kids? Let's check my clock here. Okay, we've just got a couple more questions. Um, K2 dose for kids. The children's studies have used between 45, 50 micrograms um, to 100 micrograms. So for example, Japanese children who are eating natto every day, well, they'd be getting uh, at least 400 micrograms. It's quite high amount, so very safe. Um, my own kids take typically one soft gel almost every day. Sometimes we forget. Um, which is 100 micrograms. Let's see, here we go. Um, is K2, I've got two questions, one asking if K2 thickens the blood and one asking K2 thins the blood. Um, so uh, um, the answer to both of those questions is no. Uh, K2 is not either a blood thickener or thinner. Um, for people, as I mentioned, already on warfarin, now the way the warfarin drug works is by making vitamin K deficiency in your body, so your body can't make clots. And so obviously by taking in any vitamin K, whether it's through green leafy vegetables or vitamin K2 supplement or even eating brie cheese, that will counteract that medicine. Um, uh, but uh, for normal people or people not taking that medicine, then it does not affect your blood clotting because your blood clotting uh, factors are already activated with K1. Uh, the K2 has nothing to do, nowhere to go. Uh, it doesn't thicken or thin the blood. Any difference in effectiveness of liquid versus tablets for anything I've mentioned? Um, no, no. Uh, in general, um, you know, the, the, I, I mentioned options where there's options uh, in terms of the collagen or the um, fish oils, for example. Okay, so we are running out of, there's lots more questions, but we are running a little bit over time. And some of the questions are, are complicated. Uh, mentioning some brands that I haven't heard of. Um, let me just see here. Should you take collagen with or without food? It's not a critical difference, but ideally, uh, you know, you'll absorb those collagen proteins better on an empty stomach when they don't have to compete with other proteins for absorption. Um, that's generally how I recommend. Does collagen help heal? If you stop taking it, would you lose any improvements? So like I said, yeah, your, your body will continue to, to, to boost and, and increase production and hold on to the collagen for roughly 30 days after taking it, and then you will gradually decline back to whatever your baseline was before. Uh, so you do, you know, we are always, our, our collagen production naturally with, with time and with age is always declining. So you, you, would ha you have to continue, if you want to keep your collagen up, um, then you would continue taking it. Ah, okay. Oh, somebody mentioned it. A very good and very technical question with, with, uh, um, vitamin k2 and warfarin so <laughs> which is it it, it vitamin k and in very controlled amounts uh can be taken with warfarin i actually do write about this in my book and uh, my this person says my hematologist recommended that's great that i take this vitamin because it stabilizes the ups and downs of the inr you just have to make sure um i'm really happy to hear that your hematologist recommended this um you just have to uh, make sure that you take the exact same amount every day to prevent the fluctuation. So, hey, I'm really happy to hear that more um, that hematologists are starting to recommend this. But that's the uh, that is something that should be done in conjunction with your hematologist. Uh, and for people who, uh, for practitioners who don't know about that, that you suggesting you take vitamin K with the warfarin will make them get very concerned. So make sure that you are working with somebody who knows about it. Um, 
does the collagen that we eat take in supplement form actually get absorbed in our gut to be used by our body effectively? Yes, it really does. Um, we absorb those collagen peptides. Okay, I think we're running to the, there's tons and tons of questions and we're just running to the end of our time. Uh, will collagen help large cellulite type dimples? Uh, it might, so collagen has been shown to improve the look of cellulite. Um, there are clinical trials on this, and so it is something worth trying for cellulite dimples. Yeah. Is it possible to take too much vitamin D? It really is, yes, it's absolutely possible to take too much vitamin D. Um, you know, if you're, if you're taking under 5,000, I'm not concerned, over 5,000, so even, even you know, as little as between five and 10,000, you can have problems with vitamin D. Vitamin K2 will stop that. Um, but uh, short answer is yes, you can take um, vitamin, uh, too much vitamin D, that's possible. Ooh, lots of questions. Um, okay, I think we're coming up. I, unfortunately, I'm not able to get to all the questions that are here. Uh, the very last one that I see, you know, there's still more coming. Can you take too much vitamin K2? Vitamin K2 is uh, quite non-toxic. Um, it, there's, it's been studied in extremely and taken in extremely high amounts. Not to say that more is better. Again, I don't recommend extremely high amounts, but um, people have taken it advertently or inadvertently in very high amounts and, and it is safe. Um, okay, last question. I think I've already said that a few times. It's going to be last question, but last question. I'd love to end on this note. I heard you need to take curcumin with black pepper. Is that true? I'm really glad you asked about that because uh, it is not true. Uh, this is based on very old research back in the 90s when people realized that curcumin, you just couldn't absorb it. Um, they started to look for ways to make it more absorbable. And they did a, a little study where they gave people very high amounts of curcumin and didn't, wasn't absorbed, we know that. And then they gave them the same high amounts of curcumin with black pepper and they went from no absorption to teeny little bit of absorption. It was like from zero to 0 0.4. And they said, this is a 400% increase in the absorption. But it was 400% times nothing, which is still basically nothing. So black pepper, it's the, one of the, big, it's the biggest myth in, with curcumin. It doesn't really make that much difference. Um, if you really feel strongly about it, you know, grind some onto your food when you're eating, uh, but it doesn't actually make a big difference when it comes to curcumin. Okay, lots of questions. I really appreciate all your questions. Um, we are running over time. Um, uh, thank you so much for your attention tonight and your enthusiasm and your engagement. And uh, if you have more questions, I think that we can, um, or rather if you wanna see the presentation again, it looks like it will be up on the Healthy Planet YouTube channel. So thanks everyone, have a good night.